hymnal. Let's turn to page 554, first and last. I'll fly away as we stand. down here and pray with us. We're glad you're here. Others are coming in, and we want to welcome our visitors today. And if you're visiting with this church this morning, and if you've never filled out a visitor's card, would you, uh, would you please hold up your hand, all right? You've never filled a, up a, a, out a visitor's card, all right? We want, to, we want to find out who everybody is. I'm not sure I have visitor's cards on some of you folks, but we're honored that you're here, and we greatly appreciate you being here in the house of the Lord this morning, all right? Brother Trey, let's pray together, please, sir. Lord, we sure love you this morning. We thank you again for the privilege to be in your house, Lord, on a Sunday morning. We're thankful, Lord, that you allowed us to be here. So many we know and so many we, we, we love, Lord, would give anything to be in church this morning. And God, our hearts bleed for them. We beg you, God, would you raise them up and strengthen them and help them and bring them back to us real soon if you would. Lord, we just thank you once again for the privilege to gather here this morning. Lord, to be encouraged by the brethren. And Lord, the Sunday school hour, thank you for what we learned. And Thank you for helping us and the privilege to go to Sunday school. And, Lord, we thank you, Father, for the man of God that's prepared, Lord, this week. And, Lord, prepared, dear God, to feed us this morning on your word. I beg you to make it easy for him. Pray you'd use him. Pray you'd help him. Pray you'd make it easy for him to preach. And, Lord, I pray you'd make it easy for us to hear and listen. God, help us, Lord, to lay aside every care, every concern for tomorrow, God, the work week. I beg you, Lord, would you help us for a little while this morning to sit here this morning, dear God, and open our hearts, Lord, to your word and to the spirit of God's voice. God, would you meet with us today? Would you bless these that will sing and continue to bless the choir? And may you smile on everything that's said and done. May you meet the need of every home and heart this morning. I beg you, God, would you help us, Lord, that we'd leave closer to you than we come in. Lord, meet with us today. I pray that, Lord, for every lost sinner that will be here this morning, I pray, God, for those that are maybe even under conviction now, I pray that the Spirit of God's voice would be so loud in their heart and in their ear. And, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, would you... Lord, weigh on their hearts and draw sinners in cords of love. I pray that the goodness of God would lead somebody to repentance this morning. And I beg you in Jesus' name, would you help us as a, as, as a church and as, 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 as the brethren. I pray you'd help us that we'd, Lord, be committed to, to walk closer to you and be more like you. Lord, I beg you, would you meet the need of every heart that in, the, in the hour this morning. May you get honor and glory out of everything that's said and done. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated all over the building. Again, thank you for coming, and we appreciate each and every one of you, and hopefully I'll get to shake a few of your hands in just a moment or two when we fellowship, but quickly let me go over some announcements. We'll have service tonight at 6 p.m. We'd be honored to have each and every one of you tonight at 6 p.m., and then Wednesday night at 7.30, we're back here in the sanctuary. Again, we'd be honored to have you on our Wednesday night service. Uh, please write this down. We have it in the bulletin, but we want to uh, make sure the church family is aware of it. September the 29th, end of September, which is a, I believe that's a Wednesday night, I'm almost sure it is, through uh, Friday night, October 1st, three days, a Wednesday, Thursday, and a Friday, we're having a special fall revival with evangelist Justin Cooper out of California. He uh, is basically the, the associate there at the Golden Valley Baptist Church, and so he's committed to come to us to preach three days, and Friday night will be a special youth night. So all the information is in there. We'll have the papers available uh, real soon. We're on the verge of ordering them, or Jenna is, any day now. And so uh, write the dates down so you don't miss the uh, fall revival, okay? And then the Gatlinburg trip is November the 4th through the 6th, and the deadline to sign up 
is next Sunday, the August 29th, all right? If you're going to Gatlinburg, the deadline is August 29th to sign up, all right? Let's have the ushers come on down, and we'll get the regular tithe and the regular offering. Brother Jeffrey Ledbetter says, Dear Mountain View Baptist Church, this is the preacher we had for the anniversary. Thank you so much for your kindness on the 19th anniversary. We had a wonderful time being part of all of it, and we feel very blessed to be asked to come. Thank you also for making our 23rd wedding anniversary so special. And she thanks us for all the cards. Thank you for holding up your man of God hands and honoring him and also us. God bless you. That's from the lead betters. You give today the tithe and the offering in the Lord. And if you're visiting, put that visitor's card in the offering plate, all right? God bless you. Play for us, Tiffany. guitar down just a moment we shook hands with some of the visitors we got a lady back here in the middle i know we got a card on you so we appreciate you coming back and the gordons we got a card on you we just want to get better acquainted want to know who everybody is yeah. and uh listen you're always welcome here i mean that you are always welcome at mountain view baptist church and i pray you will come and attend the services all right brother yang ask the blessing on the offering and the service please Lord, what a good day it is to be in your house. Lord, we want to come to you, Lord, with thanksgiving and praise, Lord. Thank you for saving us, Lord. Thank you for sending your son to shed his blood and die for us. We thank you for that, Lord. We want to lift your name up today. We ask you, Lord, just touch this offering, Lord, and the tithes, Lord. Just use it to your benefit, Lord. You know you will, Lord. We ask you, Lord, just touch each and every person in this service tonight, or this afternoon, Lord, that you just touch each and every one of us, Lord, and help us, Lord. Lord, there's places in our lives that we need your help. Lord, we need your help to go through this world, Lord, and tell somebody about you. Lord, help us to be bold. Lord, help us to be uh, better witnesses and better testimonies for you, Lord, each and every day. Lord, help us in this service, Lord, to take in everything that you've got for us, Lord. Touch our pastor, Lord. Strengthen him. Lord, everything that he's got to say for us, Lord, we'll, we'll put it to our hearts and our minds, Lord, and do better for We ask you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. And I want, especially my own personal family, you'll know who I'm talking about, uh, the young man right here on the left, you all, my, my family should know who that is, all right? Or maybe, maybe a lot of you others don't, but that's David Jordan's son all the way from Greer. And uh, God bless you. We're glad you're here. And, you, and by the way, I told him since he's in Greer, it's not that far. Steward will give him gas money every week. Somebody ought to help me right there. And we'll get him to come, all right? Keep it in mind, all right?
take a hymnal page 542 first and last when we all get to heaven as the choir comes down on the last Today is the cutoff day for the father and son retreat. If you'll look right here in the bulletin, we don't print these for no reason, but if you'll look in the bulletin, 
It talks about uh, who to give the payment to and the amount and, uh, of course, the date's been in there. Uh, all, all, the, all the information you need about things going on at Mountain View Baptist Church, we'll try to weekly put that in the bulletin, all right? And so keep that in mind. This is the King James 1611 boys. You worship with them. Well, they got Jesse with them, too. And so uh, we got the King James 1611 boys plus one, all right? story how a savior came from glory came to earth to save a sinner just like me and the love that he offered brought me to an old altar where i prayed and asked that he would set me free and i've got much more than i asked for there's sweet peace and joy i've never had before i've got a man Waiting for me on the other shore. Yes, I've got much more than I asked for. On the day Jesus saved me a new life. He gave me, but that was just the start of what he had in store. For each day I feel his presence, he gives grace and assurance that someday I'll reign with him forevermore. And I've got much more than I asked for. There's sweet peace and joy I've never had before. I've got a mansion waiting for me on the other shore. Yes, I've got much more than I asked for. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop. Yes, I've got much more than I asked for. for God's good to us amen very good to us all right this is going to be one of the trios and uh, you worship with this trio as they sing please be back tonight 6 p.m we'd love to have you don't miss Sunday night service don't miss Wednesday night service you'll enjoy and you'll be the benefactor of being faithful to the house of God all right appreciate uh, brother Nathan driving the bus and brother Todd and and, and Suzanne uh, I don't know if you should you call that chaperoning you don't have to chaperone 60-something-year-old people, do you? Yeah. <laughs> All right. They, uh, Todd and Suzanne chaperone the senior saints of the fish camp last night. And I'm glad they had a great time. All right? Come on. Come on. Any move God makes toward man describes the fact so precious though it's hard to comprehend for you see I was nothing but he gave me everything and of his fullness I have now received grace for grace mercy for justice Unmerited favor from God above reminds me I've done nothing to deserve the Savior's love. God forbid that I should glory in the deeds that I have done. 
for it's by his grace and grace alone the victory has been won grace for grace mercy for justice is what he gave when he died on Calvary I know that I should be in hell but those flames I never feel all because he took my place grace for grace grace for grace mercy for justice is what he gave when he died on calvary i know that i should be in hell but those flames out never feel all because he took my place grace for grace i know that i should be in hell but those flames out never feel all because he took my place grace for grace thank god for that grace amen Unmerited favor from God above. It reminds me I've done nothing to deserve the Savior's love. God forbid that I should glory in the deeds that I have done. For it's by His grace and grace alone the victory has been won. Grace for grace. Justice is what he gave when he died on Calvary. I know that I should be in hell, but those flames out never feel all because he took my place. Grace for grace. I know that I should be in hell, but those flames out. Never feel all because he took my place. Grace for grace. All because he took my place. Grace for grace. Great, great, great song. Amen. Thank God for the great truth of that song. Amen. Take your Bibles, everybody, and I want you to go to Matthew chapter number five, please, uh, for an introductory verse. Matthew chapter number five. Give me what you can on the monitor, Brother Philip. I appreciate that. And look out. I see visitors throughout the congregation. See some of our college girls back in town. God bless you. Glad you're here. Appreciate you being here. We love for people to be in church. Amen. Nothing like being in church, all right? I don't think there's no substitute for it. I really don't. I really don't. I don't believe the woods are a substitute for it. I don't believe the mountains are a substitute for it. I don't believe the lakes are a substitute for it. But I don't think anything's a substitute for having your life and your family in the house of God on the Lord's Day. Amen. And let me drop this in right here, too. You know what? Even when you're out of town, I believe it's a good habit to get into to be in church somewhere on the Lord's Day. Amen. Matthew chapter 5, let me look a little bit more. Matthew 5, verse number 1. And seeing the multitudes, this is the Lord Jesus, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. Underline that or think about that now. His disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth, and taught them, saying. Now, from chapter 5 through chapter 6 and all the way into the chapter 7, what we have presented in our Bibles is what is commonly known as the Sermon on the Mount. It comes from Brother Randy because they went up an elevated uh, location into a mountain. And the Bible said he opened his mouth and he began to teach them. 
The Sermon on the Mount is not for the unsaved. The Sermon on the Mount are principles for Christian living while we are here on this earth. And so, Brother David, the entirety of chapter 5, the entirety of chapter 6, and then, Brother Herpel, the entirety of chapter 7 encompass what we know today as the Sermon on the Mount. Wouldn't you like to have been there? What, 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 a, what, what doctrine came forth? What truths came out? What, what insight, amen? What, what great spiritual perception uh, flowed from the Lord Jesus? And by the way, if you really, you really want to study it all out, you're more than welcome to study it all out. But I tell you this, you're going to be challenged, and at the same time, you're going to be convicted, amen, about how we ought to be living on planet Earth right now. But that's not my message. Go to chapter number 8, everybody. Well, I tell you, go to chapter 7 and verse number 28. Chapter 7, verse number 28. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. Watch this. Watch this now. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. You know what that means? That means the scribes didn't have no authority. Amen. But they never heard anybody like this right here. Matter of fact, there's another verse in the Bible that said, never a man spake like this man. And he gave them this great Sermon on the Mount. That's not my message either. My message is in chapter 8. Look at chapter 8. When he was come down from the mountain. Now listen close. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. I have no doubt, no reservation that this included those same disciples. Why would you teach them in the mountain and then you leave the mountain and they're staying up there and the crowd is following Jesus. No, no, no. I, I can prove it to you. The disciples also began once again to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And here's what I want to preach about this morning. I want to preach to this church and all of us that are believers on the subject of following Jesus through difficulty. Following Jesus through difficulty. I want you to look, if you will, at chapter number 8 and verse number 2. And verse, and yeah, verse 2. And behold, as soon as they get down from the mountain, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Watch what happened. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. Yeah. And immediately... His leprosy was clear. And Jesus said, See thou tell no man, but go thy way. Show thyself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Look this way. Leprosy, according to the book of Leviticus 13 and 14, is a representation or emblematic or always representation of sin in the life. And so here's my point. As soon as the disciples are following the Lord down from the mountain. The very first thing that they encounter, Brother Nathan, is a man with a leprosy. If you look at Luke chapter 4 later on today, you'll see in Luke chapter 4, verse number 12, the Bible said that he was full of leprosy. I do not have the time this morning to describe to this congregation what kind of hideous, what kind of grotesque sight that must have been. Brother Josh, for this man, not just to have leprosy, but to be full of leprosy. No doubt, Brother Randy, he had his cloth over his mouth and he was crying out unclean and unclean. Now listen to this. He was not supposed to be touched by nobody. I said he was not supposed to be touched by nobody, but here we have him falling down at the feet of the one that created this world and he's worshiping here and he said, will you make me clean? And thank God the Lord immediately 
touched this leper and made him clean. I'm sitting there wondering in my mind, Brother Perry, what's going through the disciples' mind? Uh, for three chapters, we've heard great Bible truth. Uh, for three chapters, we've heard nothing but pure doctrine. Uh, for three chapters, we've been, we've been blessed and privileged of uh, the fellowship with the Master and to hear from the Master. But as soon as we come down from the mountain, the first thing we encounter is a man full of leprosy. Look, if you will, in chapter 8 and verse number 5. Look at verse 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth the homesick of the palsy. Look at this right here. Grievously tormented. Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come into my room and speak the word only, and my servant will be healed. For I am under, I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth, unto another come, and he cometh, unto my servant do this, and he doeth this. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Remember those that followed, verily I say unto you, you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east, from the west, sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. And skip the 12th verse, look at the 13th verse. And Jesus said to the centurion, Go thy way, as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And the servant was healed in that self same hour. Did you know loose gospel said that this servant was sick and ready to die? Sick and ready to die. If you look in the latter earlier part of the verse, it says he was grievously tormented, grievously tormented, as if tortured or vexed or vexed or tormented, as if to apply, imply a demonic sickness, all right? A demonic sickness. As everybody listened, the disciples are coming down from the mountain, having enjoyed exquisite and wonderful fellowship with their master. And what do they see when they get down from the mountain? Number one, they encounter a leper. And number two, they encounter a centurion whose servant is grievously tormented and grievously fed. But what does the Lord do? He heals the leper and he heals the centurion servant. I want to tell you today, we're serving a God that has power. Amen. We're serving a God that can do the impossible. I said he can do the impossible but when you can't do it, I'm glad he can do it. I want you to know today what he's teaching these disciples is that I am the God that has the power over despair. I said, I am the Christ. I am the Savior. I am the Lord. And I and I alone have power over every desperate situation. Somebody ought to help the preacher, amen. Look at verse, watch this, it's just going to go keep on and on. Look at verse 14, if you will, as I try to hurry this morning. Look at verse 14. And uh, when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, these are the disciples following him, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever, and he touched her hand, and the fever left. He, and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. Watch this now. I don't have time to run all the references. Brother Stoles, in Mark and Luke chapter 4, it says that Peter's mother-in-law, uh, this text said, Brother Perry, she just had a fever. But in Luke chapter 4, it said she had a great fever, a great fever. Folks, she was really, really sick. I said she was really, really sick. That's what the Bible, and by the way, that leper, he didn't just have leprosy. He was full of leprosy. And that centurion servant, he not only was grievously tormented by the trade, but the Bible said in Luke 7 that he was sick 
I'm ready to die. And now we have Peter's mother-in-law. By the way, that ought to prove to everybody that Peter wasn't the first pope because he had a wife and he had a mother-in-law. Amen. I just need to preach that one more time. I said that ought to prove to everybody that Peter was not the first pope uh, because you got to have celibacy. If you're going to be a pope, y'all ought to be helping me. And Peter had a wife, and Peter had a mother-in-law, and his mother-in-law had a great fever. i tell you what it was. It was a desperate situation. There was despair, Brother Josiah. Uh, she was sick nigh unto death. I said she was sick nigh unto death. Aren't you so glad? I want to help everybody. Aren't you so glad today that the Lord Jesus has power over despair? The Lord Jesus has power over disease. The Lord Jesus has power over sickness. The Lord Jesus has power over your desperate situation and my desperate situation. I'm glad he's on the throne. I'm glad his power has not run out. I'm glad his hand is not shorted. I'm glad his ear is not heavy. I'm glad he said, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. I tell you, we can't limit the Holy One of Israel. Uh, he knows no limit. He knows no boundary. He knows no obstacle. Uh, nothing can get in his way. No plans can thwart him. I want to say he's God and beside him there is not else. And thank God I'm glad he has the power. I said I'm glad he has the power over everything desperate in our lives. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now you may be here, you may be here this morning, and you may not know despair right now. You may be here this morning, and you're not facing a desperate situation. Well, then uh, leave the rest of us alone. Leave the rest of us alone. Just leave the rest of us alone. And I'm not just talking necessarily about sickness. But is it coincidental, Brother Barry Bishop, that the leper, that's a physical sickness. The centurion servant, that's a physical sickness. Peter's mother-in-law, that's a physical sickness. And I want to tell you something. He's the potter, we're the clay. He's the potter, we're the vessel. Can the thing form say to him that formed it, why? Hast thou made me thus? No, we cannot. Folks, there's such a thing as the will of God. There's such a thing as the sovereignty of God. There's such a thing as the perfect will of God. God knows no accident. I said God knows no accident. Uh, nothing catches him by surprise. Uh, nothing sneaks up on God. Has it ever occurred to you that nothing's ever occurred to God? He doesn't need to learn anything. He doesn't need to read anything. He doesn't need my advice. He doesn't need your advice. I'm telling you no matter, I'm telling you no matter the desperate situation in your life, I'm here to report and I'm here to preach and tell this church that my God has has power. Thank God for the Bible. Thank God for his word. And what gets me, Brother Randy, the disciples are following him. The disciples are following him. And you know what he's doing? Mr. J. Maccabee, he's taking them through a four-year certified degree in the college of learn why you follow him. I've learned why you follow me. You say, well, there's a leper. There's a leper. I can see those disciples backing up, backing up. Hey, Brother Stewart, I'd be backing up too. I'd be backing up. But the Lord touched him, and he healed him. And then there's a centurion servant. That's grievously fat. And them disciples are saying, there's nothing we can do about it. There's nothing we can do about it. And by the way, humanly speaking, there's nobody else anybody else can do. But I want to tell you, friend, God, from a distance, I can't preach this right now, from a distance, he touched that servant, and he was made whole. Oh, God, I just called us up. 
Distance don't stop him, friend. I said, distance doesn't stop it. I said, distance doesn't stop it. He didn't even have to go to the center. I said, he didn't even have to go to the centurion's house. Are you getting this? He didn't even have to go down and see the centurion. God healed him. Why? Why did God heal him? Because he has power over desperation. He has power. He has power over anything that comes into our life. Give him a chance. Give him a chance, dear lady. Give him a chance, sir. Thank God. His ears not too heavy. His hand not too sure. He's still on his throne. I said he's still on his throne. He's still operating. He's still alive. Amen. He's still alive. He's we're on the winning side. Hey, friend. He holds us in the palm of his hand for you today, for you today that are facing despair, that are in a desperate situation, for you today as you feel like you don't know what's going to happen and how it's going to unfold and what you're going to do, I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to sit back. You're going to take your hands off of it. You're going to leave it in the hands of God. And if God wants to reach in with his power and work a miracle, and guess what? That's his prerogative. And I'll tell you this. I say, Lord, amen, hallelujah. If you want to reach in and work a miracle, thank God I'm standing in line. Amen. Watch this. This, this story, this chapter is so good. Look at chapter number eight. Chapter number eight, please. We went through the leper. We went through the centurion servant. We've covered Peter's mother-in-law. Well, let me show you something about Peter's mother-in-law. The Bible said in verse 15, Brother David, he touched her hand and the fever left. Now, by the way, he's not even a doctor. He's a savior, amen. But I will tell you this. He's been known to be the great physician. Mm, mm. I said, He'd been known to be the great physician. Hallelujah. But look at verse 15. And she arose and ministered unto them. You know what? Miss, Miss Jimenez, he ministered to her. She turned right around, Brother Cam, and ministered unto them. You know who them is? You know who them is? Look at the Bible. It's Jesus and those disciples. Can you imagine going in that house? And I told you, I told you, you got to look at all the Gospels. I told you that her fever, let me get it right, her fever was a great fever. According to Luke chapter 4, Brother, uh, Brother Wagner, it was a great fever. And I'm honest, and I'm just going to tell you, if that were me, I, if, that, if that was the bed, this is about, this, this is about as close as I'd get. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to go there and say, hello, Peter's mother-in-law. God bless you. No, no. She's got a great fever. She has a great, it's probably about 100, 105. Probably been about 105 for several days. And Miss Chris, I'm sorry, but I say, hey, I, I love you. Praying for you. I put your name in the bulletin. <laughs> Amen. We'll be praying for it at the church. I'm not going over there. I said, I, don't look at me that way. You wouldn't go over there either. She had a great fever. She had a great fever. Well, look at the Bible. My God, what a book. What a book. What a book. Look at the Bible. Look at the Bible. The Bible said, verse 15, and he touched her hand. He touched her hand, Miss Andrea. Hold your hand out, Miss Andrea. He just, he didn't hug her. He didn't put incantations over. He didn't do some soothsayer. He didn't do no hypnotizer. He didn't do no voodoo. Day. He just, he just, he just touched her hand. He touched her hand. All of a sudden, that 105 went to about 98 and 96. And she sat up. She said, Lord, I'm kind of hungry. Y'all feeling hungry? I'm going to make y'all something to eat right now. Look at that. She said, let's get the cat head biscuits going. Yep. Now, some of you couldn't do that. That ain't them biscuits you hit on the side of the counter. That's them real cat heads you whip up from flour. Somebody ought to help me. Some real certain peanut, put some certain peanut butter together, and then you've got something. Say amen. I said, put the, don't be, don't be talking back. Don't be talking back. Certain, certain peanut butter? Yes, sir, then you got something, amen. <laughs> Just kidding with you. You got something then. Are you listening? Look at the book. He ministered to her. She turned around and ministered to them. Are you facing a desperate situation? 
Have you been in a desperate situation? Are you at your wit's end? Do you feel like you're at your wit's end? Do you feel like if something don't soon happen, if something doesn't going to change, can I tell you this? Things may not change. Things may not entirely change. But I tell you what he'll do. He'll change you. He'll change you. Amen. He'll change you. But watch what happened now, Miss Miranda. Look, if you will, in, I'm trying to preach all this. Look at verse 16, everybody. Look at verse 16. And when the even, when I hear it, the day hadn't even finished yet, Brother David. Verse 16. And they're still following him. When they, and they got, they got that good food from uh, Peter's wife's mother. And verse 16. When the even was cut, they brought unto him. I don't know how they found out he was in the house. They brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word. And healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities, bear our sickness, and on and on. Did you know if you compare the comparative gospels about this text right here, it said that these folks, Brother, 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 uh, brother Dennis Mabry, had divers' diseases. Divers. Divers means various. Divers' diseases. And then Luke 4 said, he cast out devils. Watch it. Watch this. Now watch it. Luke 4. We're in Matthew 8, but Luke's comparative uh, passage. Luke 4 said he cast out of he cast out of he, he the devils were cast out of many. That's 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 uh, Luke 4. Devils were cast out of many. The, this verse says that uh, that the, 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 he cast out the spirits. The, the devil's the spirit out of these. But then here's what really is something. In Mark chapter 1, same comparative scripture, it says he cast out many devils. In Mark 4, now stay with me. In Luke, in Luke 4, Brother Kevin, the devils were cast out of many. But in Mark 1 it said he cast out many devils. So my thought is that he cast out many devils out of many people. And then, Brother Mac, it says that there were divers' diseases. Well, I don't know what kind of diseases those were, Brother Randy Jr., but now listen, look up here. There was sickness coming in that door right and left. Every imaginable sickness, as you look at the text, you look at the verses, Brother Robinson was coming in that door. And, and, and here, 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 here's the disciples. Now, I know what you're going to do. I know what you do. You'd be a Walmart greeter, wouldn't you? Hello, good to have you. God bless you. Good, and they're called, they're wearing masks. Hello, good to have you. No, no, you'd be just like me. You handle that, Lord, because uh, I can tell that guy's got a devil, and she's got a devil. She's got six of them. I can tell by the way she's talking, she's got devils. Look at that idiot. He's full of the devil. Look at that man screaming like a Comanche Indian. He's got devils. And then here comes somebody else, all kind of contorted up faces and contorted. He's definitely got devils. And then they're bringing this little cot in, and this guy's got a fever and can hardly no clothes off. He looks about to die. And Peter and James John said, my God, what's wrong with him? <laughs> what's wrong? Oh, God, he looks, look, Lord, he's only weighs, 100, he's only weighs 98 pounds. Lord, here comes another one. Here comes, I, I thank you, God bless you, but I'll keep my distance. I'll keep my distance. You know what's coming in the door, John? John, you know what's coming in the door? A bunch of demon-filled people and a bunch of folks full of disease. But look at the Bible said. Look at the Bible. The Bible said they brought many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word. And he healed how many? Somebody said that next word. How many? All of them. Okay. And you think the Lord is going to be strained to help you with your desperate situation? Tony, I believe those disciples come off that mountain clicking their heels like Dorothy shouting the victory, greatest sermon we ever heard, greatest camp meet, greatest jubilee, greatest mission conference we ever heard. Can you believe them, Matthew 5? Can you believe Matthew 7? Can you believe Matthew 7? What truths did we get to hear as soon as they come down from the mountain? As soon as they come down, here comes this beleaguered, beleaguered individual. His skin's falling off. He's got pus and wounds all over. He's full of leprosy. Guarantee you, friend. 
That's a, I'll tell you, I am not Jesus. Leave there, go find a centurion servant sick, leave there, and then, and then Peter's mo own mother-in-law sick. I'm telling you today, I want to tell you one more time, it doesn't matter how desperate your situation gets. It doesn't matter how deep the trial. It doesn't matter how hard the load is. It doesn't matter how great the burden is. It doesn't matter if it's a family issue. Listen now, if it's a family issue, if it's a financial issue, if it's a, listen to this, now I'm telling you, and you gave some this morning. I got another call this morning. We've got some of our people not here today. They've not been diagnosed with COVID, to my knowledge. They have not been. They're just sick. They're not here. We got some, and we got some. Of the, we got a gentleman in our community at the hospital, and, and then we had another brother that we love that had to go to Hendersonville to get Regeneron uh, uh, infusion yesterday. And so my point is, this, it doesn't matter what the sickness is. It doesn't matter what the trial is. It doesn't matter what the worry is. It doesn't matter how desperate the situation is. And listen, you know the truth. For some of us in this building, for some of us in this building, all the things that I preached this morning, uh, do you think we're exempt? We're not exempt. I love what Brother Larry, I knew you'd get quiet on me. I knew I love what Brother Larry Brown said one time. Brother Larry Brown preached in this pulpit. You know what he said? He said, if some of that comes our way, he said, I'll just say, Lord, I guess it's our turn. Come on, church. I guess it's our turn. I'm not wanting that. I'm not shouting. I'm not praying for that. I'm not inviting that. But I'm here to tell this church this morning, I've shown you as they followed the Lord. That's my message. As they followed the Lord. And by the way, Brother Reed, I don't see them tuck tail and run. I don't see them throwing in the towel. I don't see them giving up. I don't see them quitting. I don't see them getting out of discipleship. They're still following the Lord. I'm going to get tonight. Oh, my. Oh, my. They got done with all this, Brother Ronnie Field. And he said, you know what? Let's get in the boat and go to the other side. And they're, st they're still following. You're not going to believe. You're, you're, you're not going to believe what happened when they got in the boat. I said, you're not going to. After all they've been through, after all they've experienced, the Lord said, let's go to the other side. I'll preach that tonight. But here's what I want to tell you tonight. God can handle your despair. God can handle your burden. God can handle your problem. God can navigate your situation. Amen. He's still on the throne. He come on, Tiffany. He still answers prayer. He's still in control. He's still in control. I'm telling you, he's in control. When I left home this morning. I tried to get down here a little early. And I came, I came twice. But when I left, I pulled right over here. I'm going to point to it. I pulled right over there to a residence. I wanted to catch the wife and children home. And so I tried, but there was a dog. And I wasn't sure God could handle him. <laughs> him barking and me in a suit and tie. I didn't have enough faith that God would shut his muzzle. He wasn't going to shut his mouth. I couldn't shut his mouth. And I wasn't so sure God was going to shut his mouth. So I just stayed in my truck. What would you go by for? Because I wanted them to know that we're in the community and we heard your husband was doing better two days ago and now he took a turn for the worse, what I heard last night. And I wanted to tell that dear lady, hey, you and your family's in our prayers. You and your family's in our prayers. Their kids went to our school. We're not exempt from that. We're not. Nobody's exempt from it. Folks, let's not doubt him now. Let's not doubt him now. When despair when despair comes to your address, when despair comes into your family, when despair 
comes into your children's family. Folks, it's not the time to give up. No, it's not the time. Definitely not the time to throw the towel in. Job didn't throw the towel in. I'm telling you, while you follow the Lord, here's my message. Come on. While you follow the Lord, while you follow the Lord, we are going to experience and witness. Experience and witness one despairing situation after another. You know what? I think when that happens, God's given us a time to shine. I believe God's given us a time to let our light shine like never before. To let our light shine. Some of you are in despair now. Some of you are in the middle of it. Some of you are the end of it. Some of you are at the beginning of it. Some of, now listen to this. Some of you are living your life too worried about it. Help me now. You're too worried about it. I can't, I can't, Brother Randy, I can't, I can't live today because I might be in despair next week. I, I don't know that I'm going to be. And if I live today all worried about the despair of next week, I can't enjoy today. I can't even enjoy Sunday. I can't even enjoy my family. If I'm waiting for despair to come, you don't have to wait, Fred. If God wants it to come, it'll come. My point is this. He has power over it. He has power. Let's trust him. Let's stand. Let's sing together. Sing Page it now. 37. Sing it. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Did you come bright? Pray. Do not pass me by. Do you need to come pray about anything today? Do you need to come pray. He has power over despair. I said he has power over despair. He has power over despair. God bless you. God bless you. God has power over despair. Got to believe it. Trust him. You gotta trust him, friend. You gotta trust him. Find sweet. Gotta believe in him. Rely on him. Take hold of him. There in deep country. Help my unbelief. All right, let's make the chandeliers shake. Ready? Say. forget brother Randy to the longest day I live that dear mama right here right in the middle on the phone talking to me crying in tears said preacher they won't even let me in to see my boy they won't I'm out here in the parking lot I'm gonna sit out in the parking lot they won't even let me in here to see my boy man that fired me up I couldn't do nothing about it but I'm glad not only did you get to see your boy but I'm glad you get to be on the pew with him this morning God, God stepped into that room. God himself stepped into that room. And no doubt, Brother Herpel, he took care of that despair. He took care of that despair. Brother David, he may not do that every time. He may not do that. I tell you, Brother Ronnie, I want to go into it. I want to go into it knowing. I want to go into it, Jeff Dover, believing that no matter what. And I tell you, when I preach like this, I preach like this, it makes me wonder what kind of despair I might go through. But you can't live in fear. You can't live in worry. Day by day, moment by moment, we lean on Him, we trust Him, we live for Him. 
you're here today and your despair is about to get the best of you, cast it all on him. Cast it on him. I'm telling you, friend, if he wants to, if he wants to, he can reach in with supernatural power. He can change some things. He can fix some things. Thank you. Thank you for being here. My message is following, if you're writing the title down, following Jesus through difficulty. And you know what, Miss Paula? I think that every time he touched one of them people and touched the leper, touched Simon's wife's mother, you know, touched the centurion's servant, he threw out the demons out of them people, healed all manner of sickness. I believe the disciples stepped back and they probably thought, ain't nobody like him. And nobody like him. I believe they said, he got to be the king of kings and the Lord of Lord. He has got to be who, he must be the real thing. He must be the Christ. Have you enjoyed church? I've enjoyed church. I want, Mr. Mr. Young Man from Greer, and we'll, we want you back. I want you. I love your daddy. You tell him I said hello. You look just like him. I feel sorry for you, but it's all right. I appreciate you coming. Please come back. Stuart, y'all help him to get back. You're welcome here. I mean, you're welcome here. Let's pray, all right? Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's get Cam up here to pray with us. Come on, Brother Cam. Please, we'll be dismissed in that fashion. 12.05, 12.04, really, you know we're doing good. You know we are. We're doing good. And you know you like it, too. You like it. Brother Cam, dismiss us. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. We thank you that the healer hadn't lost his touch this morning. Yes. We thank you for your word. We thank Hallelujah. You for Lord, when we do go through things, God, Lord, mm. I pray that you just help us to know that you're mm. around and you're with us and for us to utilize you as our, exactly as right. our God, God, as our to. Lord. We Lord, have to. Heart. Lord, we love you and we thank you for everything you've to. done for us, Lord. Lord, thank you for all the all the times you did heal and you did save and yeah. you did do all those things to give us the promises to know that you could do it again, yeah. and that you will. Lord, we thank you for the preacher this morning. Thank you for everything that's happened in the house of God this morning. Thank you for your church. We love you. Bring us back safely tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Come back tonight. We're going to.